three, three, two, one. one. Welcome into well, the open where we get technical. You should have investments in long term growth. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neil Hamilton. This is Get Technical. As always, with me today is producer AB. We're getting the music right. We're getting the mood set. What day is it? It's Wednesday. The quarter is flying by. What a crazy start to 2021 we have had so far. Um, Guys, if you were watching just a few short minutes ago, we were talking about sector ETFs. All right. I think everything has been leading up to this moment. This is like Thanos is about to appear on planet Earth. We've seen the after credits clips where he turns and smiles gross stocks are switching to value you know um so now it's time to take a really good look um at the sectors that actually have strength um i want to let you guys know i'm, I'm sure many of you guys know this because i i would say 90 percent of you are much more experienced than i am and better than i am um but for the 10 percent of you that that aren't as good as me um I want to show you a couple things. The number one thing that I want to show you is how to compare uh, two assets um, to identify whoops, to identify strength. Um, so one way I'm going to do that um, is just say, I would, well, we'll come back to IYR. I like this one right now. Um, and I want to be ready for the open. Um, and we can check subs too, for sure, Vincent. And bets, subs and bets. Those are both from the same firm. Um, we'll check that. Uh, that's a streaming ETF and a, and a um, sports betting ETF, um, which I would say those are industry, not sector. Uh, um, so I want to compare. I want to compare tech to um, to like the broader market, right? So let's let's just say like how is QQQ doing, um, which is like our big um, tech stocks, QQQ, and then I'm going to use that as a numerator, right? So. Go back to go back to fractions. Go back to middle school, probably, um, and we're going to use those as a numerator. That means it's on top of your little division line. And then for a denominator, I'm just going to use spy. This is not the best way to compare growth to uh, value stocks, which is the greater theme of what's going on. Um, this is just a rough one, just to show you how to do it on your platform. Right? Pretty much any platform that allows you to do charting should let you put in. A ticker slash a ticker, meaning this ticker divided by this ticker. Now, the numerator or the ticker at the top, so the QQQ, is the one that's really being shown here. It's how is that ticker performing against SPY, right? And we can see that it's not really outperforming it. Outperformance is this period, right? It was outperforming during this period of upward, strong, 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 just solid upward chaotic momentum. And now it's in a sideways consolidation phase. Um, the, a better one to really compare growth first value. Let me see. What are what are the some ETFs? If you guys know, let me know. Do you want to compare you want to compare streaming to tech? Let's do that. Let's see how that works. Um, so but so that's a, that's kind of a new ETF. So that one might not have had enough uh, accumulation yet, um, but let's try it out. So subs is the streaming ETF. Let's just compare that to QQQ. Subs has Netflix, right? It's got to. It's got to. That's probably its biggest holding, right? Let's take a look. While we're doing that, we're going to say subs uh, ETF holdings. Let's zoom in so you all can see it. Um, so Roundhill Investments is the firm that does subs. It also does bets, which is the sports betting ETF. Look at number one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I forgot. Um, we had an interview with these guys, and they're actually, it's not just video streaming. Um, it's also music, right? Um, so I think you've got, you must have Spot in here, surely. Yeah, you do. So got Spotify. 
Um, so the number one uh, is our, our, our Chinese company um, with ticker TME. Um, so that's going to be music. Get that out of here. But yeah, heavy Netflix, heavy Spotify, heavy Roku, um, Disney, um, and then some other ones I'm not totally fr- uh, familiar with. Um, but anyways, so far, so far, at least this ETF, this is not like a well-established sector ETF, is underperforming against QQQ. Right? But it's so new. So this is a tough comparison to make. It's so new that it hasn't really gone through. I'm looking at the daily chart. It's only had so many days for big money, smart money, institutional money to accumulate it. Um, And I don't know if we've ever talked about this. I think we have. But like for market phases, accumulation. That's how I always find this. This like I'm looking for an infographic to explain this. Um. Yeah, so this is this is a decent graphic. This this one I like more. Um, so if you guys can see this one on the right, let me let's just do this. Open image and new tab. These are sort of the phases that you're looking for uh, stocks to go through in a cycle. Um, this accumulation phase is at the beginning, like after an IPO, you're looking for that bottom, um, and then you're going to look for some sort of indicator that we're we're following that that accumulation. We're getting. Uh, some advancement Um, and you can call this also like like this lead-in is called the markup phase and then once it starts to flatten out that's when you start to look for uh, folks to take profit this is very very basic stuff Um, so what I would say is with this ETF um, is that we just really haven't gotten to that markup phase yet Um, is underperforming sliding this week yeah I mean this would go back I mean actually if, if this past week so that's just three. Yeah, so that would be these three candles here. The past week, Netflix. Um, Vincent says, I think uh, Netflix and Roku slide in this week. Our wife subs is underperforming. Um, very well could be their huge holdings. Um, all right, so you guys are already shouting stuff at me. Um, let me just revisit a couple of the picks, and then we'll get into uh, some of those. So I just want to go back to good old NMM, guys. Come on. I think NMM got chopped a little bit. I'm not out. What, what what kind of drop was this? It didn't it didn't trigger my stop loss, which is kind of weird. I think maybe I didn't do a trailing for this. I raised it to an actual stop. To like keep profit really tight. I don't I don't know what happened, but it didn't trigger my stop loss. Um, so NMM is our high type flag. Price target number one is still twenty six dollars. Um, we might have a little period of sideways consolidation. Um, let's see if we can see pre market data for for NMM. Yeah. I don't even think that it's covered like this. I don't think that trading view has that data for NMM. Pre-market data is a different data set. Um, bah, 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 Neil Mama Mama. Exactly. NMM. Um, all right. Picks from chat for the next three minutes, and then I want to see if I can make a, a quick day trade. On the fraction you're showing, yeah, Brandy. I'm sorry. So Brandy says um, I know how to have multiple tickers on trading view, right? So you have like the different screens. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to do it. Definitely search. Um, just do a Google search, like how to um, uh, com- gosh, that's a tough one. How to word that? Um, how to compare two tickers on one chart, perhaps? Trailing stop losses as so. Can you talk a little bit more about using trailing stop losses to track a stock up? Um, I, in my opinion, on on trailing stop losses, is that it comes down to you how often you want to check your charts. Um, and a lot of times if it's if it's just a swing trade, you should be checking them pretty often. Um, if it's a longer term holding, um, like I for a long time uh, through 2020, just had my um, my arc ETFs with a trailing stop loss. So I did the trailing that I used was a seven percent. If there's a, a day where it has a seven percent uh, uh, dip, um, I want to sell everything and then I'll get an alert to that and I want to reassess and see if I want to re-enter or wait for a better entry point. 
Um, and the trailing stop just works because that's a long-term holding. That's like years at a time. Chewy is pet supplies. Yeah. Chewy is uh, pet supplies. Um, thanks for the help on the think or swim thing, guys. Um, okay. What do you want? Do we want to, I want to check on some of these day trades, but I'm also happy to look at your guys' tickers. Um, the, the couple that I'm interested in right now, let me just check my notes. I want to see XLE on the 10 minute with my 8 and 21 EMA. I want to wait a little bit into the open, which is in one minute. We got Valet. Hey, Ramon. Uh, I want to I want to wait a little bit into the open um, and see if this downward pressure continues because we got to get past the support, right? And we kind of got down here in the pre, but I don't want to get whipsawed. So I want to make sure that this cross maintains. And if it does, I'm going to buy a put. Um, let's look at XOM, Exxon Mobile. Same exact deal. Same deal. Um, it's getting oversold though. Um, but we're in a right, we're in pretty much the right spot with our MACD. Oh, and there's the green candle. The market is open, folks. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> That's the best bell I have right now. <laughs> um, yeah, please, guys, if you're enjoying this content, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so now we're watching really closely. I'll get to some picks, but I just want to go through sort of my my, my day trades. I want to make sure that if there's going to be a cross on my two indicators, the EMA 8 and the EMA 21, um, that I'm able, able to get in right at the beginning of that. Um, so we're looking at XLF now. Wait, why? I'm looking at my old notes, guys. Sorry, I was looking at yesterday's. Um, so we got a nice cross up. Um, I just want to get some confirmation on that because it looks like it might it was like really overbought, right? Um, we're looking good on the MACD, but that cross was a little while back. So let's look at XLF or XLB rather. So XLB, like I said um, at the beginning of the show, I'm looking at sectors because the market's so choppy right now. I'm not trying to mess around and find like individual stocks. I'm just going to stick to sector ETFs right now. Um, so I can isolate strength in the market. Um, XLB is um, SBI Materials. What one? This one is. If you guys know, let me know. But let's see, XLB, ETF. Just material sector. I want to see some example companies. Can a man get some holding? Sometimes it's so hard to find what what uh, stocks are actually in these ETFs. Tradability, efficiency, fit, option. Just tell me the holdings. Okay. ETF database. Come on. Holdings. Yep, don't know a single one of these. I've heard of Sherwin Williams, of course. Okay, Dow. Materials. <laughs> um, sure. Woo, look at that. See, this is why it's good to wait a little bit before going short if the cross didn't occur. Um, this The cross occurred um, before the close yesterday. Monster candle up. I don't have an entry until I see a cross here. So if my red line crosses above my blue line, I'm interested. My hope was that the downward trend would kind of continue, but that's a very bullish candle. Um, all right, so that's XLB. And then let's look at gold. Maybe we short gold. So we're going to look at GDX. Again, guys, the market is just catty womptivity right now. I'm not interested in like, like for, first rule here is protecting capital. I'm not gambling. This is not about gambling. This is about intelligent investing. 
Yes, I will try things out and and experiment, but an experiment is very different from a gamble. Um, so it looks like this cross down is holding, but we are getting oversold. So I'm going to watch for the whipsaw here. We are oversold. Uh, the MACD crossed um, yesterday. So let's just see what happens after five minutes. I want to see what the next 10 minute bar is again. So this is a 10 minute chart. EMA eight EMA 21. The, yeah, the market is just the market is just bonkers. So so what we're doing is is I have a, a big list here. Let me switch this up. Sorry. I have a big list of sector ETFs. So I'm purely just looking at sectors. I'm not going to try to look for individual stocks. We're playing it as safe as possible. I don't want I don't want to get whipped around. Um all right, so that was gold. Gold's not gold is iffy. Gold could be the the put. We might we might be shorting gold here in a second. Um yeah, Aaron asks, isn't this the 10 minute tip you got from the options guy? Yep. I liked um Brad from Trading Ground uh Trading Grounds uh tip. This is the 10 minute chart with EMA eight, EMA twenty one. Um it is from him, it is his tactic. Um, and I like it, so I'm trying it out. Um, yeah, Jason, I can look at Flint in a second. Um, I just want to look at uh, the Dow really quick. So Dow, watching for, watching for something. Watching for the cross. See, so using this method, it would be the what day was this? This was the fifteenth. So this was yesterday. If I would have bought my put when the red line crossed below the blue line, I could have sold my put down here and it probably would have earned me quite a lot of money. So that's what I'm looking to do potentially here. But I need to see that cross. If I zoom in really closely, you can see the cross isn't there. We look for the cross for entry. Um, have you so okay, so someone's I, I promised I would look at okay, FL and T. Let's do it. So let's look at the daily since you're saying it's a swing trade. Um also big ups for uh when you name your ticker letting me know what type of trade you're looking at that gives me an idea of what time frame to pull up on the chart oh and i wanted to do we got to look back at utilities um because i think it has a nice reversal pattern that's good to demonstrate yeah it looks like hey man we're back on trend back on trend. wait this is this is dow <laughs> dow's looking good um flint all right so fluent ink i'm moving averages off very basic indicators here right now it's just rsi um uh, macd and then volume uh so let's take a whoa, oh, what, what what have they done to you flint fluent um i really a hey, long bases the bigger the base the more it goes to space i don't know what the actual thing is but i like this um, so here's what I see. Rounding bottom. Starting here. This was the final upswing in the in the downward trend. So we'll go ahead and go bop. And then we'll go over. I got to move this. And then you can see this show up just again right here. Right there. That was the end of a day candle. I was just about to close right at where we started um, our final swing up or where we had our final swing up. Um, so this is a rounding bottom. So we're just giving, putting this in context of which this thing has had a few. Um, this one, Have you been trading this? Um, this one looks like you could, one you could. I mean, it's it, this is prolonged period. So this is actually a good thing for the power of what's about to happen or what's likely to happen. Um, so this is an almost... Like this is like a six month ish um, rounding bottom. Quick maths. Um, draw resistance, and we had this thing that we've been talking about, which is sometimes it dips below, and then you get. So sometimes your rounding bottoms are going to look like this. And then this is your resistance. Um, so this does not mean rejected breakout. 
Can you see that? That doesn't mean reject a breakout. That means watch for the bounce, baby. Um, so FLNT, this is the daily chart for a swing trade. Um, I think you want to look for confirmation on the bounce. Um, and you kind of got two levels. You just got to break through this resistance. So I think that that if you get a nice green candle, um, you can shoot for a swing trade with a price target of about 847. Um, but then at a breakout above 147, we would look for full resolution of our double bottom that got it, or of our rounding bottom that got us here. Which would be just slightly higher. Just slightly higher. So you'd want to uh, break through up to about nine and a third. Nine and a third. Is that helpful? That's FLNT. Um, and then for stop losses, um, with this one, you could do... I mean, I actually like this. I might do something with this myself. Um, I'll add it to our watch list. FLNT. Right now it's on ETFs, but I'll move it later. Um you want to look for previous support. Um, so you could do a stop loss at 413, but that's probably a little bit too low. So let's just say if we get a green candle, let's say we're buying around five and a third. Let's just bring this down to about, let's just say 7.3%. That gets about 490, 490-ish as a stop loss for entry. About 490 for your stop loss for entry. Um, and then with all these, like what I'm doing with NMM and other like swing trades that, you know, maybe take one or two weeks to resolve um, is once I'm paying attention to it and the trade is going the way I want it to do, like that initial stop loss is if the trade doesn't go the way you want it to go. That's not your long term stop loss. That's if that's I'm entering and I'm this is my setup and my rocket's about to launch. But then if there's like engine failure on my rocket, that's what that stop loss saves me from. But then after your rocket is going through space, you're setting stop losses to make sure that you're continuing your gains, right? You're setting little little gas station checkpoints on your way to Mars. Um, so what I think is always good is to keep raising a manual stop loss as you're watching the stock so that you're, you're protecting the capital that you're gaining. Um, so I just want to check back in on some of those day trades. So what was I looking at? It was XLF. XLF was oversold. Go back to the 10 minute. Okay, let's go XLF. MACD looking good. Still in oversold territory. Let me turn my uh, EMAs back on. Okay, so that that cross, man, that I don't I don't like the oversoldness of this. And it looks like it's getting rejected at this level. But I think if we can break above 34, I'm in. I'm in on XLF if we can do that. But we got seven minutes to see what this candle does. Um, so I'm just going to draw a line in the sand here. Boop. Um, so I want a solid, solid cross above that line. In fact, I'm going to set a little alert. A bit higher, actually. Um oversoldness got me a little bit freaked but we shall see we shall see it's on 10 minute um yeah scott says that's why i like to use trailing stop loss so i don't have to pay so much attention to the daily moves true true but i mean you also have to look at what you're doing you've got your trades and you've got your investments um so depending on how aggressive you want to get in this in this market man you should be paying attention I would not be entering anything unless you like really believe in the fundamentals and, and be and, and you plan to hold it for a very long time. Um, or you've just got an iron stomach and you're you don't mind losing some money in the meantime. Right. Um, all right, nice cross up here. RSI is where we want it. MACD is crossing. XLB is getting a call right now. XLB. Nice looking cross. Um, trading options on XLB, getting the calls. They're pretty cheap. They're 82 bucks. Um, so we're getting in the money. XLB calls expiring Friday. Going to go ahead and grab, continue. I'm just going to grab three of them. $246 total. I'm submitting my order. 
which means I've requested for those those contracts to be sold to me, um, and I'm just waiting for them to actually be delivered to me. Um, also, big shout out thirteen if you're here. I got I got a leap on um, ET, which I think I wonder if ET is ET like does that count as as uh, utilities? Shout out to thirteen XII uh, member in the chat um, had some great due diligence on ET. Um, I'm doing really well on that leap. Um, expires uh, next January or, or 2020. Yeah, next January. Good, good, good. XLB. Can can someone give me? Can someone fill my order, please? Um, it does seem like, guys, in terms of, uh, yeah, so my leap is not like a strict leap, right? It's not a strict, it's not actually a year out, a full year out. Um, my order is not getting filled. That's so annoying. And this thing is just going. Um, I, I think I will be switching brokerages to trade station guys. Any thoughts, any, any trade station folks here? If you're a, uh, if you're a trade station person, let me know in chat, give me a one and then don't only give me a one, but tell me what you like about it. This is so annoying watching this thing beast out <laughs> and not owning my calls. In the money calls expiring Friday. XLB. Just give me my options, please. What utter nonsense. What utter nonsense! So this is uh this is the materials ETF. Check over stocks in the materials ETF. Trading and trading view. Oh, so so you use TradeStation, but you have um it integrated with trading view, so you execute your trades on trading view. My order is not getting filled. I'm hoping that this little little downswing here will help me out. Oh, really, John? John says trade stations data in quotes liked for options. I'll have to see. Oh, Pam's having a hard time getting her orders filled. It's annoying. while we're waiting for this any tickers you guys want to look at um this is xlf financial um sector etf i drew a line earlier um that if we broke through i would uh go long on it um, but it looks like we got handily rejected handily Uncle Raz is here. He has a small request. Please smash that like button. Um, let's look at Daku. Daku sign. Oh, house rule. Let me know what time frame you want to look at it on. That saves everyone a lot of time. You gotta let me know if it's a day trade, swing trade, whatever. I am getting brutalized by my brokerage right now. This is unacceptable behavior. Okay, Vincent, Vincent, just because you made it uh, easy on me. Um, thanks, Eric, for slamming the, slamming the like button. Um, okay, so we're going to look at LBS on the five-day, five-minute chart. 
This is about that. Ooh. I see you, Vincent. Do you have, do you have a specific question about this? Or you just want me to... Well, it's definitely rejecting this, this sort of reversal that we have here. So it looks like we might be returning to trend. So... Oh, geez, I want more context. Uh, final swing high before... Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's use volume profile. Okay, so it's trading well above that point of control. Okay. So what you got here is an ascending triangle reversal. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and when you have the, this, this, this is a reversal, my friend. Um, so when you have this uh, ascending triangle reversal, what you're looking for is a shape like this. And and we need to confirm with our other, our other indicators. So we'll do that in a sec. With this as your resistance support line. Okay. And that's what we see here, right? Pink, 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 gap up, round back down, holding that prior resistance now support. And we're above it, actually. Um, so I think that what you want to look for here, and let's just confirm with our other indicators, um, volume was drying up, but we had big volume during this first swing high. Good, good, good. Not huge volume right now, which is disappointing. We really want to see much higher volume than this. The MACD... I mean, hell, I, I should probably just look at the daily just to get some context here. Ugh, stupid paintbrush tool. Can someone talk to Pierce Crosby about the paintbrush tool? Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're not getting a huge surge of volume. Not getting a huge surge of volume, but that is all right. So let's go back to our 10 minute here. Or five minute rather. Sorry, bud. I think you're resolving this and then I'll bring in the, the eight and 21 in a second. So I think that you can look for, you've got a lot of strength behind what you're doing, which is based on this swing low to this swing high added to our line of resistance. Come on now. For a, a 69 he, he uh, price target. Um, as a swing um, and again this is this is what these patterns do you get this little breakout and then you get that bump right off of it and it's looking just right um, you probably hit some resistance here um, based on that bump um, it might not just be a straight shot up because you're not getting the volume to, ba to back you up um, so it might take some time um, but let's look at the 8 and the 21 crossing above baby this is on the, on the 5 let's look at the 10 minute crossing above baby um, I mean, I don't know. You might be able to, uh, do the old Brad from trading grounds, uh, trade on this, but I would wait for whatever is about to happen with this candle to really confirm this cross. Cause this thing might just, the red line might just stay below, below the blue. Um, who asked for that? Was that, um, is that Scott? Huh? I, mean, I forgot who asked for, asked for that, but good stock. Good stock. Very good. All right. I want to check back in. What's going on in, with my stupid brokerage right now? All right. So we're going to look at XLB again. Okay. So the reason that my order got filled is because that big monster green candle came slamming back down. But this is okay. 
this is okay. We've got the MACD crossing on our side. The blue line is our flat, our fast line. It's crossing above the orange, and it's in bullish territory above the zero line here. RSI moving in the right direction. We don't have a ton of volume behind us. Would like it if a lot more people would buy the stock right now. That'd be fantastic. Um, oh, Vincent. Thank you, man. Vincent, that was a really good pick. Um, so, uh, uh, Ramon, you're asking about uh, APHA. What time frame? Let me know the time, time frame. So Nilesh beat you to it because he, he says daily time frame with DVAX. A look. Don't have a look here. Looks like NMM might be getting some upward movement. Um, on the daily. Well, let's look just at our price. You guys, oh my God, you're so, what, oh, that's so, where's my thing? Where's my thing? Let me do the thing. This looks like a stock that's about to reverse. So good. So good. Um, I love this stock. So let's look at a couple things here. One is we've got a double bottom here. All right. Let's work it out, guys. Let's work through this. This is DVAX on the daily. All right. Our double bottom lines up with what looks like the high of a previous candle. This is the meat. This is the meat. Although it looks like this consolidation might be more meaningful at a different level. All right. This one is, here's what I'll say about this double bottom. You guys always hear me tell, talk about go for the, the, the meat of the price action in the middle of your double bottom. This qualifies as, this is nothing but meat. This is like a tomahawk steak. No, that's got a bone. This is like, um, this is like a, a, a burger. All right. Um, this is like a burger, um, because there's no like, like frothy, like single candle, like spraying out of the top. Um, all right. So good double bottom here. Let's see if it fully resolved. We'll see. We just want to see if the stock is doing what it's supposed to do. A little rough tech analysis. You can see that we pretty much hit our price target from the resolution of this double bottom on a swing trade. Great swing trade if you saw it. As always, we get that little fake out at the beginning with a little bit of consolidation and then bang, 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 bang. That would have bagged you some good money. Let's see. Let's just see. We're doing this for science. Um, if you got it back at the breakout above the resistance line, so I'll just randomly put a, a something there. That's potential for about 65.5% profit. Okay. Now, Let's look at this as a longer term double bottom. All right, let's get fancy here. Let's get a little fancy. We're going to go again to the meat. This time it's the meat. So we got some ocean spray here, but we're more interested in the body of our, our wave, our wave up here, um, which takes us to the high of like this candle pretty much. We could go higher though, because this consolidation lined up pretty well with this. Let's maybe do that. Yeah. I think that's pretty good, right, guys? I'm just going to draw it at the recent resistance here. Right? That's the, the thing that's defining my resistance line here. Um, and then it's doing the same thing that we had on the other time frame where we have a little consolidation. Blah, 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 boop. And then we want to see a close above our resistance line. And then our new price target for the broader structure of the pattern for a full reversal of trend 2155 big big move for this stock this is a big big overall rounding bottom here um don't know much about it yeah yeah, that's looking like a reversal territory, my friend. My friend. Um, so just to put that in perspective, that would be a gain after resistance of about 
two percent. Dang, 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 dang. Good pick, my friend. That's my swing analysis on that. Um, entry is uh, uh, a close above resistance at eleven seventy five. Um, you can set your stop at previous, uh, uh, support or resistance, um, or just about 7% for your entry. I'm going to keep raising that stop. Got a ways to go up here. Just keep that stop tight. I want to protect capital. Number one. Um, all right. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for the, the really cool stock pick. Um, okay. What else? What else? What else? V on daily. Okay, you want to look at Vincent wants to look at V. Let me let me check in on my stuff really quick. Let's look at our XLB day trade. Sorry about my nose, guys. You guys all know about my nose. Ooh. Not looking good. Not looking good. We have crossed down. We are out of this trade. XLB exiting. Selling to close my position. How many do I have? So I only got three contracts filled, so I'm going to sell those. Not a good trading day. I think I just lost 30 bucks on that. You know, whatever. It's cool, XLB. Um, but we'll keep coming back to watch it and see if, if it wants to continue fighting. Um, okay. So V V is going nicely right now. All right. So V on daily. Was it visa? Okay, cool. Get these moving averages out of the way. Look just at the price. Zoom out to get the bigger picture. We can see it's an overall long-term trend here we've got the covid dip here and then we've got our new trend established by two support points just not too far off from one of the uh, candles during covid the covid drop um, so that's our overall trend now looking at it on a shorter time frame Still using daily increments. Got a cup and handle. Pivot at this high point on January 4th. Second pivot at this high point on February 22nd. Let's bring it down. Let's bring that down. Getting a, a random call. Ignored. Got our little handle here. So we broke out above our handle. Price target four handle be defined as the depth of the cup added to the breakout point. Breakout point is right about here. Price target of about 244. 244. Um, RSI is on our side on the daily. MACD is on our side on the daily. We don't have the volume for a big breakout out of this consolidation, um, but I would look for this to resolve. They tend to do that. Cup and handles are, have a very high likelihood of resolution. Um, so you look for that, that surge in volume, perhaps, to enter at this. this. This gives you a good chance to enter into it, right? Um, did that help, Vincent? This is what I see. I don't know if you see something different. Um, I think that this handle, so you can call this a handle. You can call it, people call it a shelf. Um, this is just this period of consolidation, this corrective phase. So many terms, but it's all the same stuff. It's just what price is doing. Impulse up, corrective phase sideways. And we're looking for an impulse up to about 244. Um, what is the time frame for the EMA cross crypto morning show asks um, for the, so I'm looking at 10 minute charts for options day trades with eight and 21 EMA. This is uh, and we're looking at V this is visa. This is a swing trade on the daily chart. Um, nice little entry here. Um, really easy because you have this handle to say that I want my stop loss to be previous support probably do something like 221 nice pick nice pick 
All right. Any more tickers you want me to look at? We don't have a guest today. <laughs> I haven't disclosed that. Um, so today we call it a uh, Wednesday wild day, which means it's just Chad gets to run the show. Um, so let me know, guys. I'm going to keep checking on my, my trays. I'm trying to make some money with you. We'll check back on XLB because I just keep coming back, you know. It's in this little period of consolidation. I don't like that. Let's go to the 10 minute. Drop your tickers. Let me know your time frames. Let me know if it's a swing or a day. Um, the method that I'm using right now, I'm going to be trying through the week is just day trades using options on the 10 minute chart. Yeah. So we got to cross down. So I'm glad I got out of that before that we drop, we fill this whole candle. Um, Ramon. No, I'm not really sure. I, I kind of just want to see what happens. Am I buying ahead of the JPO conference? I, I'm, I haven't, uh, uh, I am not comfortable at my current skill level with trading around catalysts like that. The closest, so like if there's, you know, uh, uh, there's a, a conference today that's going to have uh, uh, an impact on the market, the marketplace's perception of the economy. Let me put it that way, um, which will affect their buying and selling behavior. Um I wait for that to show up in the charts, and then after it shows up in the charts, I make a decision. I'm not, I'm just not at the level of, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like it's risky to try to trade ahead of that, just set it up based on what I think, how I think people are going to react to it. Right. Cause it's not the, it's not the actual thing or the statement that causes the change. It's all about um, the broader market participants' perception thereof. Um, and that I don't, I don't know. People are unpredictable. If you ask JC Peretz, he'd be like, no, JC Peretz from All Star Charts would be like, unpredictable. What are you talking about? People have been doing the same thing since the Stone Age. Exactly the same thing. Nothing has changed. People are crazy, but they've been doing the same thing. Um, I agree, but I'm just not as, as good at it as JC is. Um, all right, so we're looking at plug. You didn't give me a time frame, but I fell for your trap. for your trap yeah what plug it keeps going down <laughs> do you want me to tell you when it's gonna stop um gap down on the daily but holding support so i mean kind of rough stuff so i mean we could even draw it here i'm sure that's meaningful yeah so you're looking for a bounce on the... I still have my EMA things up. Just ignore that, please. Um, you're just looking for a bounce. I mean, this was a downward trend. Um, very short-term one. And we'd be looking for some form of bounce. I don't know how big it would be. Uh, NNDM. <laughs> Isaac said I sounded exactly like the South Park guy. Freeze. I'm a cap. I watched a lot of South Park when I was in college. Um, and then DM, you can see I've been here. I want to just check if this. So I'm looking at and then DM on the on the uh, daily increment. I just want to see. Or was that just? Did I get faked out? So at this level, hmm, hmm, how much, how much, no, I didn't get faked out. I did it. I did that right. So it broke out. It held support for a while and then came back down. A um, couple possibilities here. So the, the rounding bottom had a failed breakout. And that's what you would say there. Um, so this is why you keep your stop losses on. Um, <laughs> um, that's why you keep your stop losses on. Um, so now we're looking for one of two scenarios. 
real breakout because remember these things do their little consolidation thing like to, to shake out the weak hands right in this case it was kind of like this so that's what we're looking for but I, I would not feel comfortable with like really piling in what i would say is 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 you could enter at resistance around like 13 to 80 but i i but i i would personally pile in um once we break through handily like like firmly on like a day candle um above this resistance line at 1796 um which i'll go ahead and just draw a more consistent line so if this stock comes up again we can look at it this way for a swing trade um price target is still um 27 and a half pretty much um and that's based on the depth of this rounding bottom added to the resistance does that make sense Um, looking at other indicators, um, you do have a cross on the MACD that says that's bullish, um, but it is in bearish territory. So we wanted the we wanted to get up past the zero line. Um, RSI on a downtrend, but we got a while to go before this really looks like anything interesting. Um, were earnings they already happen? So they missed on earnings, right? Oh, is that a beat? Why is it red? The estimate is is four cents per share, and they got sixteen cents per share. Am I tripping? Am I reading this wrong? They beat. Why is that red? Pam says VET. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. VET says, "Get me back in there, coach." I can fill the gap. Um, so VET, Vermilion, I believe, Energy, Oil Stock got got a little bit beat up yesterday. Um, but we've got a gap to close. Um, so I like it. Thanks for, for shouting it back out, Pam. Um, going into this, let's just take a look. So this is one I don't know if is highly optionable, so I tend not to look at the, the short-term stuff. Um, but yeah, just a, a beautiful candle on the open and we're maintaining it's, it's at about 10 AM and we've got a, we got an upward, uh, uh, some upward momentum at 10 AM. Um, day. Yep. Says so VT. Taking the stairs up. Uh, A R E C on the daily. So always zooming out to put things in context. Really broad base, fantastic. I think you might get resolution here, my friend. Um, so we got a rounding bottom. Nice broad base. The low is about here. We had our little fake out. Look like we're returning to prosperity. Set our targets. Looks like we actually resolved the target. Yeah, we did resolve the target. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so you can look You can look for a, a return to that if this is going to continue trading within this range. I mean, you've got like a pretty healthy bounce, nice looking candle, high volume on it. 
Uh, MACD is starting to turn around. Tough to tough to trade off of. At least for me, like I, I look for like longer term patterns, but you also got this next sort of line established here. Let me use volume profile. It's actually lower than I thought it would be. Now it looks like you might hit some resistance here. Whoops. Because I can just use the yellow line. profile by um so if you're bullish on arec um you're gonna i think get into some resistance here right around six dollars 67 cents um but of course but of course if you can get a break above 751 probably more conservatively 798 um perfectly okay to go long on it because i think that would be a 52 week high if i'm not mistaken 52 week range no i think we're a bit off but this was back in well no march 8th 19 yeah that would be a 52 week high if it broke above that um ssy let's look at tesla i, I feel like we haven't done that for a really long time <laughs> uh. This is the daily on Tesla. Is this level okay so it's back it's being supported by this previous like consolidation level just actually below right now so just going by volume profile I'm just gonna place a line in the sand right here I think I'm still in bear territory on this. Yeah, I'm still in bear territory on Tesla. Let's use our, uh, our trend lines here. I don't know, maybe not. So here's what I got to say. Um, with Tesla, if this candle continues to break down, but then bounces off of this sloping trend line that I've drawn based on these levels of resistance that we've had since um, February 8th, um, then we could be uh, fully out of the woods. Uh, but if it breaks down past it, I think we're still in bear town. Does that satisfy you? Scalping calls right now? Cool. Um, Hey, nice. How much is a Tesla call? Fiery Friday. Too rich for my blood. Um, but good luck. Oh, SSY. But you gotta let me know the time frame. RR rules of the show. That helps a lot when if you have a stock. Um, if you give me that time frame, so I know how to pull it up on the chart. Just made a few hondo. Way to go, Bobby Bryan. CEL swing. You'll sell energy for a swing trade.
Looks just like Tesla. Whoops. What is this level? Support, support, two, two supports, body of this candle. Um, so you've got a pretty important level here, uh, at, we're looking at the, yeah, right, yeah, 1533. Um, I wouldn't go long it unless it's solidly above 1533. Um, and I would definitely short it if it breaks below this sloping, uh, trend line here. Um, or very simply, if you want to just not do a slope, the sloping thing. We can just look at this previous level of support, which is also this consolidation level. Um, if it's breaking down past 1091, obviously short it. Things are going to hell. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we can hold this this level and we get a, a breakout here, I need to actually switch to four hour with this one to see anything really interesting. Yeah, there's. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Am I missing something, guys? Is there like a really uh, discernible pattern? I don't really see one. Um, I just see trading within a range. In fact, if I do Bollinger bands, yeah, your target would just be if you if you have get a break above this resistance at what is this fifteen and fifteen and a third, um, fifteen dollars thirty cents. Um, you could target the median here of the 20, is it 21? Now not, I can't remember because I have so many moving averages, but the, the median of your Bollinger Band, which is about $16.90. Um, and if it crosses that, you can target a bit higher at 19.28. Talking KMPH now? Ever FOMO should, don't get FOMO. I get FOMO all the time. Um, I shouldn't even talk. We're still in the game. Still in the game. Earnings are May 13th. <laughs> this is about it. Which it looks like it resolves. So this is uh, be like this. Um, so we got a nice rounding bottom here. We have a little fake out or consolidation. Then it looks like we got resolution on KMPH previously. Bring that up to our level. That's a really quick one. And it looks like we hit our price target and then sold off. Um, and now here we are again, look in it like a little short-term consolidation phase at that previous. Yeah, I was like this. We're, we're previous resistance here is now support. Just doing some quick stuff here. Yep, see that. So we're staying above that, which is nice. We're not getting a full breakdown back to our previous lows. Um. Now we've got a handle formed here at 11. Uh, I don't see anything easy here. Um, the way you can look at this is just like pure, I believe, like Elliott wave type perspective, which is like we've got an impulse up. We've got a corrective phase. Should be followed by an impulse up if we're in a uh, truly in a reversed bullish regime. Um, so I would be looking for a close above resistance. Like this spike was insane. I wonder what the hell happened that day. Well, that was probably like some type of test, wasn't it? Like an FDA approval or something like that. Um, close above 1398, 1393, wait, what? 1398 could go long. 
I don't see an established trend yet, though. Usually after a reversal like this, we want an established trend, not choppy hell. So a tough one. Um, bio stocks, very important to know the fundamentals on them to really protect your capital. But I know PKMPH is like the most popular stock right now. Uh, AMD Daily. Oh, okay. You were just talking about you bought a call. FDA approval. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Figure or something like that. Um, Tilray. Let's get Tilray. And my trades suck today. All good, though. I didn't lose money. It's a good day. Uh, Tilray for a swing. This level is going to be important to hold. So we want to make sure we don't go too far below it and break down past this support level from our previous handle. That would be a very bearish thing to happen. Um, so what, what am I looking at this for? So Til Tilray, you just wanted to look at a swing in a day. That's fine. Um, swing trade, really tough to say th that there's a setup here. The only thing that there could possibly be, there has to be a reversal because of this, this strong downward movement that we had. Um, so you could look at this like a little saucer, which is not even a reversal. I don't see anything clear here for entry. I'm looking at it from a uh, day trade perspective. And remember, guys, if you're really following the stock, say you're in a chat room where that says, everyone buy Tilray, Tilray, Tilray. Um, it might adhere to different rules. Um, but I'm looking for stocks that have very clear entry and exits. Looking solid for the, <laughs> excuse me for one moment. <laughs> um, looking solid from the day trade perspective. Um, so it's got uh, RSI is in confluence with uh, the price action or with our with our moving averages here, which our red fast line is crossed above our blue slow line. MACD made the cross, uh, the blue is the fast line here, made the cross during the pre-market hours um, and is solidly moving up uh, past our zero neutral zone into a bullish zone. Um, I think a nice day trade p potentially. Um, I'm I'm willing to uh, to enter it myself. With an in the money call, I'll just buy one. It's 156 bucks. Long call. Thanks for the tip. Um, okay. It's <laughs> a so Kelsey. Sava, please. Looks ready to explode. All right, fine. Give me the time frames. You want really mob. We're at 1027 too, so I, I got a jet here in about three minutes. Okay, so T we're going to do TRVG. We're still looking at the day. It's strong on the day. Very strong. MACD agrees. RSI agrees. Um, watch for it to get oversold on the, this is the 10 minute. Looking very strong TRVG. Would have been a great trade this morning. Um, longer time. Oof, longer time frame. Okay. Yeah, switch to daily. Hey, now longer time frame. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, is Trivago? Is this a traveling like kayak.com? Oof. Rounding bottom. It looks like we may be returning to glory. Um, resistance. We had our fake out. Now it's time to, to prove our metal. We might get 
We might get this and we might get this. Both are bullish. Not bullish as this <laughs> when it goes down. Um, so price target based on our rounding bottom pattern here on Trivago. This is going to be the last one for the day, guys. Uh, depth of our rounding bottom. Beautiful rounding bottom. Thank you for that. They make the world go round. Uh, is 863. Dang. Let's see what kind of returns that would be. About 70, 72, 73%. Nice. Nice reopening stock. Well done, my friend. I'm going to keep this on one on the watch list. Um, all right, guys. This has been Get Technical. I'm Neil Hamilton. As always, with support from producer A B Aaron Bry. Aaron Bree. I forget how to say that guy's name all the time. Um, stocks covered today. A whole bunch. Be careful out there. The market's very, 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 very choppy. Focus on sectors that have strength. Look at your sector ETFs to find a safe harbor in this storm of a day in the market. Um, big thanks to everyone that had stock picks and gave me the time frames. Super helpful. Um, give us a like if you like the show, if you like the format, smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Also hit the bell. That'll alert you every time we're on. Um, and as always, follow me at Neil's Tweets if you want to get the picks ahead of time. Great picks, though. I think you guys had better picks than I did. Um, at any rate, it is 1030 in the a.m. Detroit time. This has been Get Technical with Neil Hamilton. Happy trading.